So I just moved to Boston and I need furniture. That got me thinking, uh, why don't I do a tutorial on how to build something from start to finish and show you the differences between CAD and the real world. So with that said, let's jump right in. Alright, so this is my coffee table. Uh, nothing special, it's just a standard coffee table, put a couple of um, chamfered edges on it. If I rotate this around, you'll see that there's a pocket here. Basically the pocket's there just to make the thing a little bit lighter because it's made of a pretty thick piece of solid wood and it's going to weigh a ton to move around and really it's not going to affect the strength of the thing but just makes it a little bit lighter and easier to move around as well. The legs themselves, I actually bought these from Amazon. So what I did was I took out a pair of calipers and I measured them up for the sake of visualization but also it's really important that I get the pole placement correct so that when I try to screw this in it actually lines up with my top. And I'm planning on using some threaded inserts in here so that I can then disassemble it and not damage the wood because I've got a dedicated little brass thread on the inside there. So that's enough kind of explaining. Let's actually jump into it and have a look at the hairpin leg itself. And you'll notice as I zoom out that obviously this thing is at an angle. Now when I modeled this, I didn't actually model the leg separately to the plate and then move it and angle it into position. I modeled it all in place and I'm going to show you exactly how I did that. So let's start a new design and jump right in. So I'm going to go to sketch, create sketch, and I'm going to hit my ground plane here. Let's just pan that up a bit. And I like to start by basically doing a kind of rough uh, visualization of what my actual final piece will be. So we've got one rectangle, we have another rectangle, and if I hit T on the keyboard, it's going to jump me into the trim tool and just get rid of those two edges there. Next up, I want to dimension the thing, so I'll go to sketch and then sketch dimension and I'm going to add a dimension at this edge and a dimension at this edge. And that long length there is 110 and my short length there is 45. Now I don't need to add dimensions here and here manually. What I can do instead is hit the equal button and pick this edge and then pick this edge and then pick this edge and pick that edge. And basically, this means I won't have to put in dimensions manually here, which is gonna busy my drawing up. It also means they're now linked. So if I change that one to like 20 mil, you'll see that the other one changes accordingly as well. And the same would happen here. And that way I can keep a neat drawing, don't have to be bombarded with a bunch of sketch dimensions in place, but still know that I've got full control and full constraint over the sketch itself. Next up, I'm just going to drop in some circles where they need to be approximately by using C on the keyboard. So we've got one in the corner here, one in this corner, and then we've got two over here approximately. Again, I can use the same dimension trick by clicking on this one and specifying that it's 5 mil, and then hitting the equal button and doing the same thing. So click this one, and then this one, click this one, and then this one, click my driver tool, and then this one as well. So now I know these are all the same length, and if I do the same thing, if I change that to 7, the rest of them change accordingly too. Next up um, is actually positioning these things. So when I measured um, my actual leg, the one that I have uh, in the workshop, using a pair of calipers, I could only really measure from this edge to that edge based on the calipers I had available to me, as well as the dimensions. Now you may, you may be wondering how it is that you actually add a dimension from an edge of a circle to the other edge so that you can position it correctly. Well, it's actually pretty easy to do with Fusion 360. So if I go to Sketch, Sketch Dimension, and before I do anything, if I right click in the space, you'll see I have an option here that says Pick Circle Slash Arc Tangent rather than the Arc Center. So if I use that and then zoom in here, I can actually click on the edge of the circle and my other edge and it's going to give me the distance between those two and that dimension is 7.6 mil. You can do the same thing again, you just got to make sure that you right click and change it back to arc tangent each time because Fusion will swap back to arc center to neaten things up and speed things along for you. Most, most of the time you probably only do this once and then be using the center point afterwards. Now this time I'm not going to bother putting the dimension here because I can double click on it and then click here and it'll actually drive these two to be associative. And I can do the same for this one up here. So D on the keyboard, 
right click, make sure I pick Octangent and just pick my Octangent there and then just right click and change the Octangent again, pick this one. And then I'm going to drive these all from that 7.6. So I'm just going to double click, click on that one, double click on that one. Same thing again. And we're good. Now the dimensions for these ones are a little bit different, um, just based on their spacing, but it's the same principle using the Octangent tool, clicking on the edge. I'm just going to put these in after the fact. So let's just get these dimensions in place. Oops. That. And then same thing again. All right. So the long distance here is 32.8. And this distance is once again 7.6. And do the same thing I did last time. Let's just move that so it's a bit easier to see. You can double click on it, click there, double click on this one, click there. And those are now in the right position. Next up, I want to put some points in that I'm going to use as references for where the actual leg itself goes. So I'm going to start by hitting L on the keyboard to draw a line. And I'm just going to draw a diagonal across here. And if I click on that and then click here to change it to a construction line, because I don't need it to be part of my model space, then I'm going to go hit S on the keyboard and start typing in PO. And you'll see that point appears up here. Click on point. I've got one in the midpoint there. And you'll see before I click that you get a little blue triangle. That's the signal to let you know that you're at the midpoint. So I click there once. Then I've got another point over here, another point over here and just need to dimensions these up. So, whoops. So between here and here, we have 14 mil. And then just another way of doing this is if I click on that at the point of creating it, it'll know what it is I'm referencing. And let's just do that for this edge too. And this edge. Okay, now we've got our drawing, everything's referenced, everything's in position. We can hit stop sketch and start doing some 3D. So the first thing we're gonna do is go to create and extrude. And the thickness of my plate is actually seven mil, so I'm gonna go minus seven that direction. Fusion is gonna automatically hide my drawings. Um, if I open up sketches, I can switch that back on. By the way, if you don't like that Fusion does that, if you go to, if you click on your name and go to preferences, you'll see in the general tab, if I go to design, the bottom option here says auto hide sketch on feature creation. If you deactivate that, then when you create a feature from the, the sketches, it won't auto hide them. Some people prefer that, some people don't. I prefer to use, um, uh, the auto hide feature just to keep things neat as I go along. So I'm going to leave that as it is. Next what I'm going to do is create a reference um, plane using the construct tool if I go to offset plane so that I know the bottom height of my leg. Now I've got a 17, I've got a 7 mil plate here and I know that the overall length is 16 inches because I bought these in the US. So if I type in 16 inch and then put minus 7 mil, you can see it over here in the dialog box. Fusion is actually going to auto calculate and factor in the different units of measurement I'm using. Next up, I'm going to go to sketch, create sketch and click on this reference plane I just created. And all I'm going to do is project in that point there to the plane I'm working on. Now I hit stop sketch and you'll see I've got the reference plane. The construction plane was also um, auto hidden after I created the sketch on that plane. So things are now nice and neat. And this is where it gets clever. So under construct, there is an option called plane through three points. Now I have two reference points down here, which are where my legs connect to the plate. And then the apex of the uh, curved round bottom there too. And as soon as I click on that third one, you'll see a construction plane pops into view and it's at the exact angle that I need it to be. 
So rather than trying to faff around by creating three-dimensional reference geometry and using 3D sketches, with an object as simple as this, it's actually easier to use the three-point construction plane to get exactly what I want in place. So once again, I'm going to create a sketch, use this plane, and I can just start by going to, if I activate 3D sketch here, and then hit sketch, circle, and two-point circle, I should be able to, yep, there it is. I can snap to that point I just created. The radius of the bottom here is approximately 30 mil, sorry, the diameter. And next I'm just gonna slice, and if I rotate up a bit, you can see grayed out here are the points that I used. So I'll go to sketch and then line, and I should be able to snap to that point up here and then directly onto the tangent. You'll see we get a little tangent symbol that lets us know we're creating and connecting to our circle at the tangency. And then I can just trim that bit of line I don't need and hit stop sketch. All right, now my reference is in place. Last step to do is go to create and then pipe. Now, when I click on my pipe, because I'm bashing into another geometry, Fusion is going to automatically assume that I want to cut. I'm actually going to tell it that I want to join. And then I'm going to hit 10 mil. Actually, I'm going to use a new body and just show you uh, what happens when you create this pipe. So as soon as I hit OK, everything looks kind of fine. But if I zoom in, look at this from an angle, you'll see that the... Uh, the pipe doesn't actually connect all the way through. And that's because the pipe is only ever going to draw to the end point of a line. So to extend this through, if I just go to modify, press pull, and then click on my, let's just zoom in and click on my surface there and then just pull it through like that and repeat that same process on the other side. And I'm having trouble picking the part I need here. So if I long press, with the left mouse button, I can actually find the face I want, which is that one there, in this little depth tree that appears. And I'll just pull that through a little bit, hit OK. And now I'm gonna to go to Modify, Combine, and I'm gonna pick the plate as my target, and this is my tool, hit OK. I'm gonna turn the master folders off for sketches, and if I open this up, you now see I've just got one body in here, which is my leg. Last step is just to put, round this off a little bit to make it look more like the final thing. So if I hit modify and then fill it, I'm just going to zoom in here. These edges on the version of the hairpin leg that I bought are rounded off. Very grateful for that. I'm quite clumsy and I don't want to uh, cut my fingers on it. And then I'm going to add another fillet to here, which is basically just to simulate what the... Um, the welded edges look like. So I'm just gonna put a small three millimeter uh, fillet on that. You don't have to do that yourself, but I like to do it for the sake of uh, presentation. And then the last step, I'm gonna rotate this thing by right clicking and then going to move slash copy, click on body one, and I'm just gonna rotate this 180 degrees. That way when I link the file into the coffee table itself, it's already gonna be oriented up the right way for me. All right, that's looking good. All right guys, well, I hope you liked that first tutorial video. Uh, this is the first in a series of four videos. The second one, we're gonna actually talk about designing the tabletop and linking the files in. In part three, I'm gonna show you how to use off-the-shelf components like screws and threaded inserts and where you can get them and how to bring them in. And then the last video, we're gonna actually build the thing and show you the differences between setting up CAM tool parts and then what happens in the real world when you work with a material like wood. So, hope you like this one and I'll catch you on the next one. Bye.